Welcome to Nafi Paints. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make some really cheap fences for your tabletop miniature games. With that, let's crack in. So the first step here is to measure and cut the cardboard to size. This will form the poles of the fences. I've measured these at 7.5 centimeters by one and a half centimeters. The reason for using cardboard is when you cut it, you get these little indents in the sides. This makes it a lot easier for the mesh pieces to slide in and form your fence. With all the cardboard cut, now I just grab myself a piece of mesh, which I've also cut to the same size. So I apply some glue into the groove of the cardboard, then take my piece of meshing and just slide that into position and let that sit to dry for a few minutes. Some of the sections of the fence I've decided to damage up as they all wouldn't be uniform in the underhive. Using a pair of scissors, I just cut away some of the meshing. Also some of the areas I just fold the meshing over just to represent the uh, fence being bent. Doing this simple little step just varies up the fencing a little bit. And also some holes allow access for models to get through. These pieces are glued to the cardboard in the exact same way. The next step is to make some bases for the fences. I've done this with some five mil foam board. The width of the bases are measured at two centimeters and cut them to the length of the fence. I want these to look like concrete at the end. So I just use my pencil to draw some lines across and then just draw some basic cracking patterns in the concrete as well. and took out a few little hunks and chunks here just to show it breaking up over time. Because I'm using cardboard, it's a very soft material. I don't want it to bend too much. I've reinforced this with a couple of toothpicks, leaving some of the toothpicks sticking out of the bottom just so I can pin this into the concrete base. With the pins in, I applied some glue to the bottom of the fencing, then glued this down into the middle of the base. On the ends and the top of the fences, you can see the uh, shape of the cardboard. I wasn't happy with this. So I just took my hot glue gun and filled this in and using the tip of the glue gun, just heated up the glue to flatten it out. The final thing I did before painting was to take some random bits from my bits box. So a couple of examples of my ladder and a little piece of barbed wire here. There's a link on the screen now just to see how I make these. Adding these few little details just gives my fences a bit more variety. With those pieces built, now it's onto painting. The first thing I did was undercoat them with my airbrush using some Vallejo Black Primer. Once that was dried, I used some Tamiya Soil Effects. This has like a sand or grit in it. Put this around random parts of the model. This will represent rust in the future. You can use Typhus Corrosion from Gaze Workshop if you wish. If you don't have one of these products on hand or you just don't want to buy them, you can always just use some PVA glue and some sand from the garden and that'll achieve the rust effect just the same. This next paint here is out of a rattle can. This is from Mr. Hobby, and this is Mr. Oxide Red Surfacer 1000. I've just simply shook the can up and sprayed this directly onto the model. When I chip away at the paint later, this oxide color will show through and give me a good base for my rust. Once that red oxide had dried fully, I then gave all the fences a coat of chipping medium from Vallejo. I let this sit for a further 30 minutes before handling to paint. With the chipping medium fully dried, now it's time to apply all my base coats. So I'll just run through quickly what these all are. This first one here through the airbrush is plate mail metal from the Ami Painter. The poles of the fences are applied with Drake Tooth from the Ami Painter. The yellow here is Avalon Sunset from Citadel. This bluish color here is Night Haunt Glow from Citadel. And the black is Abaddon Black also from Citadel. These bronze areas are painted with weapon bronze from the Army Painter. And the blue here is Cantor Blue from Citadel. So with all the base coats applied, now it's time to chip up the model. This is really simple to do. I've just got an old toothbrush here, dipped it in some water, and slowly just work the toothbrush around the area, back to the chipping medium, and take off some of the flakes from the top. With all the chipping done, I painted the concrete. This was done with Filthy Cape from the Army Painter. Now it's time to apply a black wash. This is done with a generic poster paint from the dollar store. I mixed it with a bit of water and just applied this over the entire model. After the wash had dried, I decided I want the concrete to be a bit darker, so I went over it a couple more times. Once that black wash had fully dried, I got some European dust from Vallejo, mixed this with a little water and applied this wash over the entire model just like I did the black.
The next step here is applying the main part of the rust. Usually I'd do this in three different steps, but for this build I decided to do it all together and see my results. I was really happy with the results I got, so I'll keep doing this in the future. So the first step here is to get some autophagous corrosion and just apply this in random areas around the model. While the typhus corrosion was still drying, I got some rust texture from Vallejo, applying it into the same areas to let the two colours mix and bleed in together. And the third colour to add to this mix was a watered down dry rust from the Ami Painter. With the dry rust, the only difference was I was a little bit more sparing applying this colour. For the chains on the fence, I've applied a couple of coats of watered down nylac oxide from Citadel to them, just building this colour up slowly until I was happy with the end result. With those paints fully dried, now it's time to move on to the final step, which is the dry brushing step. For the silver, I've gone with lead belcher from Citadel. And for the concrete, I've gone to the filthy cape again, then gone over that with a really light coat of gorgon hide, both from the Army Painter. The final thing I did was to add some posters to my fences. If you're interested, here's a link to how I do my posters. And with that, the fences are done and ready to be deployed into the underhive. Thanks for watching Navy Paints. If you liked the video, please click the sub button or leave me a like. If there's anything you'd like to see in a future video, please leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch ya.